Hello, and welcome to Soothing Pods Sleep Stories. My name is Arif, and tonight I will be your guide as we travel back to the times of creation of the gods and goddesses, and follow Nyx, the goddess of the night, on her journey to make the world what it is today. We will travel through Tartarus to find light in the darkness that is her cave. We will journey through wildflower peppered meadows as we bring the mist of night across the land with Nyx on her daily trip. And, most of all, we will find the peace and comfort that night brings. Before we begin, however, let us take a moment to unwind and find peace and comfort in the place that we are in here and now. Close your eyes and allow your body to sink into the mattress underneath you. For just a brief moment, turn your attention to how your body feels, the way your arms and legs feel as they sink deeper into the mattress with no tension, finally at rest. The way the soft blankets rest on your skin, encompassing you with warmth and comfort. The way your head feels as the plush pillow cradles it, welcoming it to rest. With your eyes still closed and your body in a peaceful resting position, turn your attention to your breath. Picture the breath as you draw it in your chest. See the night air as it fills your lungs, nourishing your body. And as it nourishes your body, watch as that dark night air turns to something light. The air in your chest begins to glow a soft, wonderful gold. And as you exhale, imagine that golden, shimmering air filling the room around you. It embraces you with comfort, with a warmth and safety that comes with this kind of rest. Breathe in that night air once more. Feel it sparkling and changing in your chest as it nourishes you. And then watch as it flows out of you turning the air around you into the comforting golden light. You have that positivity and peace inside you. You have the ability to feel it within yourself and to put it out into the world by simply being here. At any point during our journey to ancient Greece, you are welcome to come back and focus on breathing. You are welcome to fill the air around you with that glowing golden light and to remind yourself that you carry it inside you always. Now that we have taken a moment to relax and find comfort in the place that we are in here and now, let us begin. In the beginning, before Zeus and Hera, before Hecate, before Athena and Aphrodite and Persephone, there was chaos. There was no heaven nor earth. 
there was just the void that was chaos. It was a field of mass and energy, a swirling stew of shadowy power that existed, surrounded by nothing. Imagine swirling clouds of gray, purple, and black, sparkling and twinkling as they glide around one another, iridescent, powerful, and wonderful. This was chaos, and from chaos, everything else was created. The whole world was created. From chaos, marvels were crafted. Gia, the earth, Tartarus, the deep underworld where souls were judged after death, and Eros, love. Soon after, as Gia gave birth to everything beautiful in the world, two more figures would form from chaos, Erebus, the god of darkness, and Nyx, the goddess of night. They would be two of the most powerful, feared, and important gods in Greek mythology, though their names were often lost to the sands of time. As the world slowly came to be under the power of these gods and goddesses, balance came with it. Nyx and Erebus gave birth to Hemera, personification of day, and Ether, personification of the upper sky. And with their creation, Nyx could finally serve the role she was sent to the earth to fulfill. Every night, as Ether and Hemera began to tire, dusk would fall upon the land. It was one of Nyx's favorite times of day. She would emerge from her home in Tartarus every day and climb to the highest mountain peak she could find, just to sit and marvel at it, even if only for a moment. She would watch in awe as the fading daylight painted the landscape in tones that seemed too beautiful to even exist. Green mountains were transformed into canvases of marigold, sandstone, amber, and bronze. Winding rivers that had spent hours reflecting the beautiful blue of the clear summer sky were transformed into something else entirely. The colors of the setting sun splashed across them painting meandering rivers with orange, pink, purple, and gold. They seemed to carry with them the magic of the day as they laced through the beautiful countryside before releasing their colors onto the sea, which was perhaps the most stunning sight of them all. As the sun set, causing the colors to shimmy their way down the landscape further and further, Nyx would take notice of what the people and animals in the landscape would do. Sometimes, Nyx would creep down the mountaintop and peek at the people coming in from the fields from behind the shadows of the trees, just so she could get a closer look. Men and women would journey in from the lush fields full of flourishing crops. Sometimes they would have hay or bushels of wheat piled on their backs. Other days 
they would be carrying armfuls of fresh veggies, asparagus, leeks, and cabbage, all of which looked ripe and ready to be made into a nice warm stew for the night. Nix would breathe in the aroma of the fields, of the hard day's work, the earthy aroma of the loam, the sweetness and freshness of the vines, the soothing scent of the fennel, thyme, and oregano that had been set in baskets to dry. It was all magical to her to watch humans make their way from the land with such a bounty and then the fathers and mothers would pile into their houses where their children would greet them with hugs of pure affection and love. Nix would smile at them, admiring the connection the people had managed to forge in this beautiful world. She'd breathe in the scent of their nightly cooking, leek and other stews, overflowing with fresh veggies and herbs and grains. Sometimes Nix would sit down just outside the window, hiding in the shade of the house as she listened to the families eat together. Sure, Nix had a family of her own, but this was something special, something normal and simple. She heard how much they appreciated every scoop of stew that they piled into their handmade bowls. She thought about how the light of her daughter and her son had allowed those plants to flourish and grow, had allowed this family to create a life where they could find joy in such simplicity. Normally, by the time the family she chose to follow finished dinner, it was time for Nix to do her job. She would hurry through the woods, her feet gliding their way through the slowly cooling grass with ease. On the way back to the mountaintop, she'd watch as the animals of the forest hurried to settle down for the night. Deer would walk in tight circles atop the long grass, patting it down to create a soft, safe place to sleep for the night. The birds would dart and drift across the sky in beautiful arcs as they all made their way back to their cozy nests before nightfall. And when it was time for nightfall, Nix was ready to bring it. Every single night, she would start the night atop the highest mountain peak. She would extend her hands, and like magic, she would bring the mist of the darkness with her, the veil of night. She would walk slowly, ever so slowly, her hands stretched out at her sides, her fingers trailed through the air, catching on trees and plants as the atmosphere cooled more and more. The warmth of the day disappeared with every step she took, and in its place, brisk, refreshing air began to form. But there was one night in particular, 
where the true magic of her role in the world became apparent to Nyx, a night she would never forget. It started like all the others. She outstretched her hands and brought with her a mist of darkness. It brushed between her fingers, coating the landscape in night like a thick, dreamy fog. Nyx felt utterly at peace. The more she walked, the more silence fell upon the land. She turned her gaze up to the trees as the birds nestled up in their homes. She watched them as they closed their sleepy little eyes and burrowed their heads in one another's feathers, welcoming a night of rest and relaxation. She wondered how far they had flown that day. Had they flown to the far mountain peaks? Or down to the sparkling sea? Had they grazed the tops of evergreen trees and dove down to the soil of the earth, looking for something delicious to eat? It occurred to her for the first time that her bringing this veil of night over them gave them permission to let their guard down, permission to curl up in their nests, close to the ones who cared deeply about them and fall asleep. There were no seeds to gather, no animals to outrun. At night, they could simply be. She walked further through the forest, really listening to the soundscape wrapped around her. Gradually, the beautiful chirping of the birds grew quieter and quieter until there was no sound but the wind weaving its way through the trees. As she continued to walk, pondering deeply about the peace she had brought to the creatures, she stumbled upon another glorious sight. It was a deer. Many times on her journey into the forest to bring night to the land, she would see the deer making its bed in the tall grass beneath the trees. But today, it was different. She took in the sight of the deer as it waded into the grass. It was a tawny beauty flecked in gorgeous spots of white that seemed to glow in the silvery moonlight, making its way through the tree canopy. It was the first time that she really realized how gentle the deer was. She saw the grace of the creature as it moved round and round to make a little home for itself in the depths of the grass. She wondered about the deer's day. She found that deer startled at the slightest noise. It wasn't their fault, nor was it a flaw. It was a way that they kept themselves alive. They often weren't safe, even in a forest as beautiful as this one. And yet, at this moment, the deer was at peace. There was a softness in the doe's big, 
sparkling eyes as she moved around and around, crafting a soft place to lie for the night. And as she curled up, Nyx could see the gratitude in the doe's eyes, the relief, the peace. The doe's eyes closed so slowly as the darkness of night swept over her. It was like Nyx was pulling a blanket over her stunning coat and tucking her in for a few hours of rest, where nothing mattered but how comfortable the grass was beneath her. As Nyx continued, she found herself outside of the forest, crossing through the very fields where the humans worked throughout the day to survive. She stepped over ripe vegetables flourishing on the curling vines. She waded through plumes of wheat ready to be harvested. And she found herself approaching the tiny, modest home at the edge of the field, the same home that she would often sit outside, the same home that was full of laughter and aromas of vegetable stew. As she passed the house, she really looked inside for the first time as night fell upon it. The parents were tucking their child into bed. Everyone was smiling, glowing in the warmth of flickering candlelight. They exchanged words of respect, of love, of hope for the next day to come. The parents gave the child a gentle kiss on the forehead before they curled up in a bed of their own, pulling the fluffy covers up over their tired bodies. But even after they settled into bed, their day was not over. The child told a joke and the parents laughed and laughed, filling the entire home with joy that only laughter can bring. The parents giggled to themselves, urging their child to go to bed. But the laughter couldn't stop. Nix found herself by the window hesitating to watch such a wonderful display. After finishing the day, this family used the night to connect with one another, to laugh and feel at ease in a way that was hard to do during the day. And even once the child and father fell asleep, the mother was still there, watching the flickering candle with a smile on her face, embracing this downtime to simply be without any expectations. It was a magical sight, something Nyx had never considered before. With her power, many of the gods feared her. Many thought of night as synonymous with darkness, with danger, but that wasn't true. If anything, her night was synonymous with peace, with rest. She continued her journey feeling entirely refreshed, feeling even better about herself and her role in the big, beautiful world. As she walked, dew coated the grass around her feet. The air chilled more, 
urging the crickets to stir and sing their song into the universe. It was a song that always filled Nyx with happiness. It was the soundtrack of her daily task, the soundtrack of her journey across the land. And my, was it a journey. She made her way through those rivers that laced through the countryside, reveling at the feeling of the cool water brushing over her tired feet. She made her way over the mountains that silhouetted the landscape, taking a brief pause at the top of each one to soak in the beauty of the vista. She traveled through thick forests of cedar and pine and lush, expansive fields of wildflowers and wheat. By the end of her journey, night had, indeed, arrived. Every night, she would stop by the edge of the sparkling sea, and every night, she was treated to a view that felt like a reward. On her walk, she urged stars overhead to emerge from the pitch blackness of space. By the time she reached the ocean, they would be there overhead, sparkling, glistening, thousands and thousands of brilliant glowing stars peppering the inky black sky with their grandeur. They seemed so distant, and Nyx knew they were. But some days, she swore she could reach out and brush her fingers through the sky, like skimming her fingers on top of a cosmic puddle. She wondered how the stars would feel against her fingertips. Would they know that they were born of her? that she had invited them to be, to remind the people of Earth that light was, indeed, still there, that light would find them tomorrow, and the next day, and the next. Some days, Nyx would sit at the edge of the water for quite some time, she liked watching how on clear nights, the stars would reflect in the never-ending sea that stretched to the horizon before her. It was like looking out over a massive mirror. And then it was time. On the other side of the land, dawn was destined to break soon. And with that, Nix's job would be done, at least for a few hours. Thus began her own journey back to her home, though her home was not of the earth. Instead, it could be found deep, deep within Tartarus, accessible only to the worthy. Nix rose to her feet feeling revitalized by the sights she had seen that night, by the birds and the deer and the humans finding total peace as night embraced them. She, too, was looking forward to embracing peace of her own. She journeyed into the underworld and found herself standing before the river Styx, her son, Karen, sat upon the boat, the ferry that would take the souls that were no longer living to their final destination. He was the ferryman, the man who spent all day long taking people 
on that final journey. He smiled at his mother and welcomed her aboard before asking how her day was. He couldn't help but notice there was a special twinkle in her eye, a lightness to her. She told her son about the birds and the doe and the humans in the field with a bountiful harvest. He listened to every word as he rode over the dark river. While many feared his mother, he simply admired her. She was a woman of great power, of even greater power than Zeus, and yet there was a gentleness to her that few people ever had the privilege of seeing. They talked for quite some time as they rode down the winding river Styx, though for many it wouldn't be a peaceful journey. It was home for both Karen and Nix, until finally they reached Nix's home. When people heard about her living in the underworld, many pictured a place of darkness and despair. But Nix's home was anything but. It was a cave on one end of Tartarus, set back from the river. The cave wasn't dark at all. In fact, it was illuminated in the warm, golden glow of dozens of candles that all flickered eternally. There was a warmth here, even in the depths of the underworld, and there was warmth here for good reason. Nyx was not just the goddess of the night, she was an oracle, and on that day of discovery, she came home to find several people waiting for her. It was a crowd of people she knew, gods and goddesses alike, who looked at her eagerly, ready to hear what she had to say. She offered them all a warm smile, and as she made her way by them, she couldn't help but notice that that day, like every day, they parted for her, giving her space to pass and make her way to her rock podium where she would speak. But Nix wasn't ready to speak that day. Instead, she turned to the crowd and urged them to be patient. Then she disappeared deeper into her cave home. The further back she went, the darker it became. But it wasn't something she minded, because in the darkness is where she could find her light, the love of her life, Erebus. He smiled up at her, glowing in the dim light of a single candle which he was reading by. He was like a beacon to her, a lighthouse no matter the weather, no matter the storm. To what do I owe this honor? Erebus chimed before he welcomed his love into his arms with a hug. She told Erebus of her day, of the wonderful things she had seen, of the peace that their gifts of darkness and night brought to the land. Erebus listened intently, as he always did, delighted to hear that that had such an effect on Nyx. They sat there in the dark with each other for quite some time. 
Erebus stroked Nyx's hair as they talked and relaxed, reflecting on their day together. It was something Nyx had seen the humans do countless times, but not something she allowed herself to do very often. Sitting there, wrapped in her husband's arms, it felt like heaven. When Erebus asked her about the crowd, Nyx told him the crowd could wait. After all, night was the time for rest, for reflection, and she would bring them both when she was ready. Eventually, she rose to her feet. She gave her loving husband a kiss on the cheek, lingering there for a long moment with him. Then, she smiled as she walked back toward the entrance to the cave, letting her husband's loving touch fall just behind her. She emerged from the cave to find the crowd waiting there. Their eyes sparkled with hope, with promise, and Nyx knew she could bring them even more serenity. She stepped up onto her rock podium and began to speak. But when Nyx spoke, it wasn't just words. It was like music, like poetry, like a spell. No one nearby could do anything but simply gaze up at her in total and complete awe as she spoke up there, as she talked about the future and the past, as she handed wise life advice on a silver platter to everyone. The whole crowd listened to every single word as if they were in a trance. It didn't matter the night. The effect was always the same. People stared up at her, starry-eyed, amazed, comforted. She was weaving magic into the air with every phase, every word, every breath. In the back of the cave, Erebus always listened. Sometimes he would close his eyes and soak in her words, bathing in them like they were his salvation. And truly, they were. They brought him more comfort, more peace, and more happiness than anything else on earth. On that night of discovery, Nix's speech was even more remarkable than usual. A sense of absolute serenity and calm lay over the crowd like a blanket. Some of them closed their eyes and sat on the floor as they took her words into their soul. And then she was finished. The air seemed to sparkle as she said her last few words. People surrounded her, thanking her and bowing to her. Nix said nothing else to them, smiling instead and giving them a simple bow back. She retired to the cave, tired from a long night and ready to see her beloved. He welcomed her once more with open arms. They sat there in comfort for hours, until eventually Nyx knew it was time to return back up to the surface. 
she walked outside the cave, feeling refreshed in a way that she never had before. Her son waited for her there on the ferry with a smile. She climbed aboard, and he began to row in long, gentle strokes across the river Styx. Nyx emerged from the underworld, feeling comforted by her interaction with her son and her husband. Feeling comforted by those that had waited for her and soaked in her words. And for the next few hours, she was alone. Although she didn't quite feel alone, she journeyed to the top of the mountain, the very same mountain where she watched the light shift and change every single afternoon. This particular afternoon, things seemed more beautiful than ever. The sky was a mosaic of pinks, purples, oranges, and blues. The colors all swirled together in the sky, reminding her of a light version of chaos, a light version of the beginning of everything. She watched as the last slivers of daylight tiptoed across the land, painting the rivers and valleys and mountains along their path. And then she knew it was time for her journey to begin. But this day, it felt different. This day, she saw the true gift that nighttime is. I hope you have enjoyed this story, and it has brought you a night of peaceful relaxation. Please join me again tomorrow night for another sleep story. Until then, sweet dreams.